Hey guys, so today Eve and I are going to talk about meetings. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, have you ever seen a software engineering team complain about having less meetings? Yes, I think so, many times. It depends on what you mean by complaining about less meetings. So if you mean that they want to have less meetings, absolutely for sure. Uh, or complaining about that they don't have enough meetings, that could be the other interpretation. But my, my English isn't flawless, so uh, I'm just going to go with, yeah, they want to have less meetings. This is absolutely the... I would say that this is the... probably one of the most common complaints that are like non-tech related for software developers the biggest one is uh, like all hands all, hands down like uh, is uh, complaints about dependencies or like the you depend on somebody else to do something as part of the process it can be like slow code reviews or some api maintainer who doesn't reply or you know ops or they're slow on like tickets or so forth and so forth. anything that like i would say that that i I would even go as far as to say that's probably the number one complaint in practically every company in every industry in the entire world. Dependencies. Everybody hates dependencies. And so, uh, usually the way that I tackle this sort of problem is that I, I've I'm not, honest to God, I haven't really gotten so far with this concept to a lot of people. And I don't know why that is, because to me, there is a very definitive and easy way, in my opinion, to dealing with the meeting frequencies and so forth. So fundamentally the argument that I present to my team when they tell me that they want to have less meetings is that I ask, well, do you know why you have these meetings? And so usually people don't really understand like why they have all these meetings. And that's the first thing I, I try to address with the team. And I say, I will argue that the reason why you have all these meetings is because there is someone who either is starting the meeting and sort of inviting you or so forth, uh, who doesn't know what they need to know. They're not sure how to get that information and they're not sure how who to include or uh, into um, into order to sort of figure this out because the biggest symptoms uh, when if you see, if you see that you have a lot of meetings i argue that the biggest symptom is the uncertainty of how to proceed that is the same fundamental problem that makes people need to sort of so, you know do sync meetings synchronize what are we going to do now plan things etc etc uh, i'd like to t uh, i'd make this little, little analogy where if you think about uh, how say conventions work or things that we take for granted in every day in society. There was a time when that didn't really happen because you really did have to converse about how to do something. A classic example was, uh, uh, or uh, one that I like to bring up is, if you needed to have a dialogue with every shopkeeper when you want to go and buy something about how to pay, every single trip to the market would be pretty difficult. So when we had a trading system, that basically became the problem. Right? You had to figure out, okay, how many furs do I need for that many, you know, I don't know, screwdrivers or whatever you're trading in, right? And so we create a solution such as like coins and like uh, currency and so forth to sort of standardize how you actually do trading. And then, of course, what are the norms for, say, going to a restaurant? How does it work? Do you pay before? Do you pay after? Et cetera, et cetera. And if you think about that, there are all these unspoken contracts that you have in everyday life that you don't have to discuss it because it's super crystal clear to everybody how it works and so there are no discussions about it the same thing you can apply uh, the same idea you can apply to your meeting culture if you have for example no documentation or no standards around anything then every single time somebody wonders how to do something or is unsure on how to do something they have to have a meeting or they have to have a sync up with someone ask questions etc etc now questions aren't bad but they lead fundamentally like the, the, the it is the nature of those questions that leads to more and more meetings so in a classic example is you have a product manager who doesn't really know if they can build something that's a meeting right there they're going to have to include the software engineers because they have no technical knowledge of, say, the system. So how will they know if they can build something when the stakeholder asks? Well, they're going to have to have a meeting. So 
there you are. And if your coworkers don't really know how to say write tests or how to uh, how like how to structure their code or how to design a specific API, that's another meeting because you can't really you you have to see sh they want to check with everybody else what do you think so they can make a good decision and that's fundamentally the reason why you have meetings so that someone or more, it doesn't have to be one person, but more or less so that people can feel comfortable, confident in the action that they want to take. Now, what the software developers have as an issue is that they see the meeting as an obstruction to their work. That's the thing that I try to change with them, and I have I try to make them understand that the reason why you have the meeting is because your delivery, your your stakeholder, or whoever needs to talk to you they can't progress without you. So what you should start and think about is, is this a meeting that you could avoid by documenting something? Classic one is if uh, you have like a lot of support issues or things like that. Can you reduce the amount of people that have to be involved in this process without losing the domain knowledge? This is something that I do for example, and the classic one is that you need to have like the stakeholder who or, like, or some person who knows everything about the system and Basically, you want that individual to share that knowledge with everybody so that you can reduce the amount of people who need to be in the meeting, but at the same time, you don't want to have like a dependency on one single individual. So what I usually do is that I create a role or a rotation on what I call the support person. Some people call it goalie or something like that. But basically, you document all the things that you do in your daily job within the, uh, or the daily work within your software team, you know, setting up environments or checking the logs or the running some specific command to fix something that might happen once in a while, etc, etc. You document that so that it is completely understandable. You can create the, what we uh, you can call it the playbook, basically. And then you rotate the responsibility of having that job on a weekly or bi-weekly basis between the team members so that everybody knows how this thing works. Anybody could fix the problem. You don't have to have one single person doing it. And all of a sudden you can reduce the amount of people who have to be involved in say debugging issues or going into sync meetings or so forth around like how can I support this person, etc., etc. And then you can kick it up a notch and say, all right, so let's say that you have meetings related to product development. Well, that's a bit more difficult because now all of a sudden it's a dynamic thing where it basically comes down to, you can't standardize that because it's not a repeatable process. It's a question of does like the product manager actually know what they need to know in order to do the work that they do? And if they don't, either you have to switch out the product manager, get a technical person who can actually answer these sorts of questions, because that's what a really good product manager brings to the table, domain knowledge and autonomy to the team. Uh, but if you don't have that, you might actually have to designate an individual within this I could create a bridge person like a tech lead or is a technical product manager or someone like that who can actually reduce the amount of people who have to be in that meeting and that also brings us back to as I was saying that all that you, but that is a mute action if that person in turn doesn't actually know how all of this works so if you have one say backend developer who knows everything and you make the tech, the tech, the team leader, the tech lead is the front end developer who doesn't know anything about back end. You're back to square one again. This is what the, the core, I argue, in uh, when you realize why the meetings are occurring and what actions you can take in order to reduce the amount of people who have to be in there and to the point where the only time the teams have to be involved is when it really is all hands on deck when the knowledge sharing is happening. If you can get to that point, then you're in a sweet spot. And then I go to the developers and I explain to them, I can get you to a point where we reduce the amount of noise meetings that you get, where you don't have to really be there, where you don't feel that like you can contribute, uh, contribute all that much to the bare minimum. But you should understand that your job is not just to sit there in your own bubble and write code. That's a perspective issue that a lot of software developers have, and that is an attitude problem that I address very quickly. Your job is to make uh, to get us results, to help us get results, and in some cases that means that you have to be in these meetings because it's important that you understand where we're going, how the product works. You basically have to take responsibility that goes outside of your own comfort zone of just coding. And I've worked with a lot of software developers like that. They don't they don't like that. They just want to sit and code monkey away all day. You can basically leave the, my team immediately because we can't have an individual like that. 
we need people to like because it is your responsibility to know what's going on with the product and the overall team structure like all the things uh, so that we can uh, write the right code and that you can take on uh, the responsibility of making sure that when you're pulling, creating pull requests and you're prioritizing and doing all this stuff, you're sort of aligning with the rest of the team. That's a shared responsibility. It's not any one person's responsibility to know what's going on in the overall uh, structure of the team. That's everybody's responsibility. So what I want you to take away from this is that absolutely, no, probably say the second most common complaint I hear from teams uh, is like we want to have less meetings. My tip to you is to say it's basically start talking to them in this manner. All right. What are the meetings that you don't like having? Usually I say that no software team that is healthy can have less than uh, less meetings than it all you all it's always a range of course but usually having like retros and like these sort of health meetings, they are very important and it's very difficult, I would say even almost impossible to reduce it down to the bare minimum. So you should really figure out is the complaint about having less meetings really down to that they have an attitude problem where they sort of perceive themselves as being this lone wolf person. I don't, I just want to focus on my code. I don't want to do, deal with any of this stuff. That's a problem with the software developer. You need to address that very quickly because that's, uh, that's, uh, that's an individual who will just sort of do their own thing. They don't give a fuck about the health of the project. This is very bad deal with those people but at the same time take a look at what you can standardize what you can reduce down if you can create these sorts of roles where knowledge sharing is happening and people feel like they know what's going on without having to have all hands on deck for every single issue that might occur soft uh, in support errands and things like that as i was saying is very good to have like a support person or a goalie or something like that that takes on like a rotating responsibility to sort of be on call uh, because the it, it really comes down to that managing who has to be involved at any one time without losing domain knowledge in the overall team if you can do those two things together you can usually reduce this down to like the bare minimum of friction but you can never just uh, go all in and say we shouldn't have meetings have a great day